me, it's Marianne. Um, my voice is about gone, it always is, so um, bear with me as I try to make this video. Um, it's kind of dark in here, and um, I kind of didn't want my face to be seen too much because um, I've been crying so much, you know. Um, so let me give you an update. It's been over a year um, since the narc left, and um, I've been going through a real dark time, real sad time. Um, I, the sadness, you know, like I've been depressed before and I've been angry and I went through the, the stages of grief and all that, but like, like it's not getting any better. Like, this, like I have this sadness. I don't know how to explain it, this heaviness, this sadness that like I cry every day, like I can't stop crying, you know what I'm saying? I carry the sadness, I'm just sad. I have strangers come up to me and tell me I look sad, that I, I have the saddest looking eyes I've ever seen. You know, I just, I'm just sad, you know, I'm just sad. You know, I'm not mad or anything, I'm just sad. And um, I think what what contributes to that is um, I have to still see him every day because my dog took to him and um, bonded really well with him. It was as obvious when he left that the dog would go with him because the dog, if the dog could talk, the dog wanted to go with him. So the dog went with him. And so um, he would he would bring him over here on days he worked and days he didn't work, he wouldn't bring him over. So I was like, okay, I'm the dog sitter. I'm the dog's mom, I'm not a dog sitter. And so I've just sent him several texts saying, look, I'm, I'm I'm Milo's mom. I'm not his, I'm not the dog sitter, you know. Stop using me as a dog sitter. That's all you ever seen in me was a dog sitter, you know. That's all I ever was to you was a dog sitter, you know. I'm not your dog sitter. And it's like, um, I watch this person walk out on me every day. Like, he, um, he comes and he unlocks my door. He's got a key to the door. He lets the dog in. And then whenever he's ready to come pick the dog up, he shows up unannounced and he opens the door and the dog's normally waiting at the door for him. So he never comes in. We never speak. He doesn't say anything to me. Um, it's very awkward. It's like we didn't spend 10 years together. Um, there's no interaction between us, nothing. Um, he, he, he just drops the dog off, you know. And um, so I told him the other day, stop bringing the dog. When I need, when I want to see the dog, I'll come get the dog for the weekend. But it's like pouring salt in, in an open wound, you know. Every day you're walking out on me. You know, in my mind I try to tell myself, you didn't make it out of the hospital. You you you, 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 did, you, you didn't make it home from the hospital. You know, that's what my mind tries to tell me. It doesn't try to tell me that you're five minutes down the road and I'm not allowed to be a part of your life, you know, because you don't spend any time with me. You don't let me come visit. You don't come visit me. We don't go eat anywhere. We don't hang out. We don't talk. I text. You don't respond. Um, the only conversation we have is about the dogs, you know. And um, I don't, how would y'all handle that? How would you handle someone being walked out on every day? I mean, that's kind of like how I feel. So I feel like I keep I'm stuck, but I can't move on from this because he needs me every day. I watch everything I want, leave every day. And then on days that he doesn't bring my dog, I'm watching, you know, thinking, what is he, what are they doing, you know, what is he doing? You know, or, or are they gonna show, when are they gonna show up, you know? And I'm scared to have company over because, you know, what if I have company over and he gets the wrong idea about the company or whatever, you know? I mean, it's just like, I don't, I don't, I don't get it, you know, it's like, using the dog to still hurt me, to continue to hurt me type thing. I mean, I guess that's something narcissists do. I mean, I don't know. But it's a way to keep me triangled in the web. I don't know what it is. But I know it's got me to a point of sadness, to the point to where I just want to sleep and not wake up. You know, I'm, 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 at, I'm at, the sadness is so painful that I mean, instead of getting better, instead of time healing this wound, I'm over a year into this, and I feel like I'm still at day one. Like, I, I'm worse. The sadness is worse than what it was at day one. 
You know, day one is nothing compared to the sadness I'm feeling a year later. And I asked myself, why am I so sad over somebody that never seen or spoke to me, that never told me I was pretty, that never had anything to do with me, that came here every night just to give me the silent treatment and to belittle me and gaslight me, that didn't like hanging out with me, didn't like being around me, didn't like anything about me, really, you know? And he came for the dog. He was just here for the dog, you know? Or so that's what he makes me believe. I mean, I don't, I don't get it. It's such a mind fuck. You know what I'm saying? It's such a mind thing that they do to you. And this is real life. I'm a real person. I'm not an actor. I'm not a YouTuber. And it would be nice if you would like to subscribe to my channel because I do want to make more videos. You know, my life could be a reality TV. You know, I wake up today to find out my brother, I got my brother a job with the guy that owns my store, who owns half of this town that we live in. Um, very wealthy man, very powerful man. I got my brother a job with this man. This man went out of his way to help my brother who was getting evicted from his place because they're gonna tear the house down. It doesn't have no running water. He doesn't have electricity to it, nothing. So this guy, He's giving him an apartment to live in because I got my brother this job with it with this man. And the man likes my brother so well and he's so proud of my brother's work. He was giving my brother a place to live, giving him an apartment, rented him a U-Haul so he could move his stuff and rented it for an extra day for him. And um gave him money for food and everything he was gonna need, you know, set him up as long as he was, you know, continue showing up for work, doing doing good work. You know, this guy was really gonna look out for him. And the girl wakes me up this morning telling me my brother's in jail. So I had to go break into his old house because I don't know where his new apartment is that he was moving into. And I found his dog, which used to be my dog. It's a Rottweiler. He's really old. I found him. He wouldn't bark or nothing to let me know he was in the house. I find him. I break in the house. I get him. And I got him here in my backyard because so, he knows how to open my gate and get out. And I've got a little teacup Yorkie in the house. I can't bring his giant dog in the house. So, anyway, I'm hoping my brother makes bond tomorrow. And, you know, I go up in the store, and it's in a low-traffic area, low-income area, no customers, and it's Memorial Day, so I make nothing in sales. And it's just, my girlfriend decides she's going to clean out my car. She doesn't clean out my car. She, my car is a cleaning car. It's got all my cleaning stuff in it. And if it don't have my cleaning stuff in it, it's got my store stuff or booth stuff in it. You know, my seats are always laid down. It's it's like my truck. It's got my stuff in it. And I hate when someone tries to clean out my car because they go mix all my stuff up. And I can't find anything I need to clean with. So when she got done and she left, I had to go out to my car. And she didn't clean out my car. I, you wouldn't believe all the trash I found in my car. But I had to redo and re-put my stuff back together like I need it to work because I have to work tomorrow, you know? And it's like, don't help me. Don't help me by cleaning out my car. The next person that tries to clean out my car, I'm gonna scream at them. Do not touch my effing car because you mess up with, with my work stuff. You don't know my system. You don't know how I need my stuff. You don't know what's my store stuff, what's what. Don't touch my car. It may look a mess to you and it looks like I can't give nobody no rides because I don't want to give nobody no rides. You know what I'm saying? I want it that way for a purpose. This is my work car. I work out of this car. No, there's no room for me to show it on nobody around. It's a work car. You know, I use it for work. You know, it looks messy to you, but I know where everything is that I need. I know where all my clean mop, I mean, I know where all my stuff is. I mean, don't do me a favor by cleaning out my car or cleaning up anything at my house because you put things where I don't know where they are. When they sell online, I can't find them. I mean, don't help me organize my things. I, I, I have my things where I know where they are. So when it sells or when it needs to go to the booth or to the store, I know where to grab it. So it's my dysfunction, my line of organization. I know where it's at. Leave it be. You're not helping me. If you want to help me do my laundry, you know, help me with my laundry. My laundry's way behind. I could use help with laundry. Not my house, if I can use help with laundry. But really, 
I'm sorry I haven't made videos in a while and give y'all any updates, but um, that's what's been going on with me. I've just been in, I guess, the dark night of the soul, or I don't know what you call it, but I've just been in just such a funk, such a depression, you know. I don't have enough work coming in to make the, make the bills, and I'm just I'm about to lose everything I own, and it's just been hard, and I'm, I'm, I'm in the sadness, and... It's, it's like I'm stuck in it. It's like Groundhog Day. Like I relive the same day every day over and over again. You know, it's like uh, 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 every day, and, and I can't get I can't get past it. You know, I don't get to see my grandkids. I miss my grandkids. You know, I don't get to have a relationship with my oldest daughter. You know, I'm, I mean, it's just. My son's got a baby on the way. I don't get to see him anymore. My youngest is 15. She's growing up real fast. She'll be 16 this year. I don't have much time left with her. And it's like the world's all going on around me, and I'm sad. And I'm not getting to participate in anybody's life. And I'm alone. And I mean, look, he, he's a... Uh, Leaving a person like that, or being away from a person that you love that doesn't love you back, and didn't devalue you, you would think, you know, things would get better. And in some ways, I am at peace. I don't feel like I'm walking on eggshells anymore. But it's like, I feel like I need someone here mystery talking back to me or giving me the silent treatment to be happy. You know what I mean? Like, I need someone here lighting the fire under my feet all the time. Just, it's like I need that mistreatment to be okay. Is that not crazy? I mean, what's that about? Where does that come from? Why am I like that? Why do I think I need, need that kind of treatment to be okay? What is about me misses that? What about me misses that? What about me misses being reminded I'm not good enough? What about me wants to see this every day? This jumping the dog off every day, messing with me. I, I don't know what a day is like. It's like not watching this woman walk out of me every day. I mean, who does that? Is that normal? You know, because I don't know what is and what isn't. I mean, someone needs to explain this to me. I know there's people out there that are specializing in this stuff or, or say they do or say they've been through all this or whatever. Well, help me understand what is wrong with me that makes me so sad and miss that and think I need that in my life so bad. Why can't I feel confident and know that there's nothing about that to be missed? There's no reason I should feel sad. He's not sad. He's happy, go lucky, not giving me a second thought. Why can't I be like that? You know, why can't I move on? Why do I have to be hurt? Why do I have to care? I mean, I don't understand. Why do I need someone sitting over here giving me the silent treatment, acting like I'm not in the room to be happy? It don't make sense. Something's not right up here with me. That ain't right. Well, more people don't want that. I know one person would be thinking, praise God, is, or is the, the bringing the dog here every day is that a, is that a Hoover tech, tech, tactic? I mean, what is that about? Is that keep, why are you keeping me triangled in with his web of stuff he's got going on? I mean, what is it about? Because I, we, I already know he's, he's secretly gay. I've done figured that out. That's who gets all this time, uh, and the best of him is his boyfriend, his, his buddy that he has to be with every day. To work, he calls to work with, but the dude don't know, don't do no work. He just keeps him company and just with him all day, every day. They they've been seen together more than me and him ever were seen. We were together ten years, you know. I mean, he he threw me away for the, for him, for them people, for that family.
you know. So, I mean, I was good enough to sit and watch him almost die where no one could get him to get, go, convince him to go to the hospital. I did. They got that 40 pounds of fluid off of him. It's a miracle he did. And he left it. When he got to the hospital, he went to his mama's and he ain't been back here since. Not to get a stitch of his clothes, nothing, nothing. I ain't been back for nothing but to drop that dog off for three days. And not say a word to me like we never met. Is that not some kind of abuse, though? not like an emotional abuse or something? I mean, what do you, how do you handle that? How would you handle that? Somebody help me. Like, subscribe, leave me a message in the comments. Help me understand what I'm going through and how to get past it and be okay. This is Maria, and I appreciate y'all for listening. And stay tuned because I got more videos. I'm going to try to do one every day, sharing with you what's going on in my life or how my day went. And, and, and I'm going to ask more questions until I find the answers. And then I'm going to help enlighten and other people about this. Because this has been pure hell, what I've been going through. Pure hell. And I have no human, no human friend. I can reach out and touch to talk to. There's nobody I can talk to. There's there's an app, a social media app I get on, but they don't have a clue what I'm going through. There's no one in, I have no support system. There's no support team. There's nobody. There's just me silently suffering alone, going through all this. And nobody to talk to. Nobody to tell what I've been through. Because I'm too fucking embarrassed to, to tell some of the stories. So, I mean, you know, this is hard. Me understand. Thank you. Like and subscribe. Let me know something in the comments. Help me on this journey. Help me get through this. I'm counting on you viewers to pull me out of this sadness and help me find my way back to who I, I am. Happy, joyous me. Find me that I used to be. Help me find my way back to myself. Please. Help me find my way out of this pain. Please, because right now I'm at, I'm at war with the devil for my soul. I feel like I'm at war with the devil for my soul. He's fighting, for, he's fighting to take my life, and I'm fighting for my life. And I need y'all to fight with me. I need y'all to lift me up and inspire me and pray for me, encourage me, share your wisdom with me. Tell me if, you, if you've been through this, tell me I'm not alone. Tell me something, even it's a lie, it'll make me feel better. Please, I'm counting on you viewers. Help me through this.